five, four, three, two, one. Hi class, Dr. J with you. So you're currently working on module five. Now, one of the more interesting topics, and it can be a little bit challenging because it's different uh, that you'll encounter in module five, is the topic of atmospheric stability and adiabatics, which is why I am using a balloon as a prop to help you understand stability and adiabatics. Okay, so this uh, balloon that I have in front of me right now, yes indeed it is a balloon, but um, really it is an example of what we know in the topic of adiabatics and stability as an air parcel, right? So whenever I use the term balloon, think the term air parcel. Okay, if you think a little bit about this balloon, right, we've got this, the balloon is made of this rubber skin that keeps the air from outside the balloon, from getting into the balloon, and the air inside the balloon from getting out. An air parcel works very much like that in the atmosphere, right? An air parcel doesn't allow any air in or any air out, nor does it allow any heat in or out. It's perfectly sealed. As a matter of fact, it's sealed better than this balloon. We know that balloons leak over time. Our air parcel does not leak. All right, now our air parcel is capable of doing a few things in the atmosphere. Oh, and by the way, when we're talking about air parcels, we're only talking about the vertical movement of air. So air up or air down or air staying in one place, right? We're not talking about the horizontal motion of the air. That's wind, a completely different topic, all right? So we're focusing our attention now on the vertical motion of air, and we're thinking about these air parcels. Okay, so these air parcels can do one of three things. Our air parcels can rise through the surrounding air, rise through the surrounding air in a vertical sense, right? So that's one thing. Oh, by the way, the surrounding air, it's got a fancy name. We refer to it as the environment, right? So all the air surrounding the parcel that's not rising or sinking, and it isn't in the environment, and that's just the in the troposphere, right? It's referred to as the environment. So our air parcel can rise through the environment, Remember, the environmental air is staying stationary. The parcel rises through it. That's one possibility. All right. A second possibility is that our air parcel can sink through the surrounding environment while the environmental air stays stationary. The third possibility is that our parcel can remain in one place relative to the surrounding environment. Okay, so those are the three different motions that our air parcel can take. All right, now let's, what, let's consider what happens to the air inside the air parcel as the balloon rises, sinks, or remains in one place. Okay, now remember, the air inside the parcel, it can't escape, nor can any heat energy. All right? The air inside the parcel is completely separate from the surrounding air. All right, so now as our air parcel rises, right, What's going to happen is that our balloon is going to expand, right? It's going to get bigger because it's encountering lower pressure, all right? So as our air parcel rises, it expands. A lot like a hot air balloon, if you've ever seen it rise, it expands as it rises, all right? So a rising balloon or parcel will expand as it rises. And as a result of that expansion, the temperature of the air inside the parcel will decrease and it decreases at a constant rate, 10 degrees Celsius for every 1,000 meters or one kilometer that the balloon rises. Memorize that number, right? So rising air parcel expands and the air inside the parcel cools by 10 degrees Celsius for every one kilometer. Conversely, as our air parcel sinks, right, the balloon is compressed, it gets smaller, right, and the air warms up by 10 degrees Celsius for every 1,000 meters or one kilometer that the parcel sinks, right? That is the adiabatic lapse rate. Now, of course, if our parcel's remaining in one place, right, it doesn't expand uh, or, or it isn't compressed, so its temperature doesn't change. All right, 10 degrees Celsius cooling as the balloon rises because of expansion, 10 degrees Celsius warming because of the compression as it sinks. That is known as the dry adiabatic lapse rate. Lapse means to fall off, right? Remember that number. Okay, now let's complicate things ever so slightly. Now notice that we said dry adiabatic lapse rate. Well, what does that mean? Well, we define dry as anything less than saturated, right? 
uh, anything uh, less than saturated. So any relative humidity less than 100%, or, or any case where the temperature, where the dew point is less than the temperature. All right. Um, okay, so uh, now let's go ahead and consider the case if our air parcel actually is saturated. And what will happen quite often is our balloon will rise, rise, rise. It will initially be unsaturated, cooling at the dry rate, and eventually the air will cool to its dew point temperature. The air will be saturated, and any further or farther lifting, I should say, will be at our next rate of cooling, which is the moist, or we sometimes use the term saturated adiabatic lapse rate. All right. And that is a slower rate of cooling. So the number to remember there is a lapse rate of six degrees Celsius per kilometer. Now, now why does a balloon that's saturated cool at a slower rate? All right. Well, for one thing, the, the, the balloon does, in, in fact, uh, still expand as it's rising, so it cools. But at the same time, gaseous water is going from the gas, from gaseous water is condensing. It's going from the gaseous phase to the liquid phase, and that releases heat energy. Remember the discussion of latent heat energy? All right. So yeah, the balloon's rising and expanding and cooling, but at the same time, some heat is being added to it internally, internally, which offsets the rate of cooling. So our moist adiabatic lapse rate on average, this can vary, but on average is six and a half degrees Celsius per kilometer. All right. So those are some of the key ideas related to adiabatics and stability. You really need to understand this, this topic. So take a, do a, a, a good job uh, of reading the material in your textbook, doing the activities in the Mastering Geology website, and of course, reading the material in module five and give this a lot of thought. Okay. I think you'll really enjoy adiabatics and stability. Okay. That is it for now. Of course, I'll be back with another video in the future. Dr. J signing off, wishing you a fun time with module five.